Today I am going to present another interesting case number 3. As like other cases, this case also has been taken from the files of DigiScan histopathology set. Clinical history of the case. 28 year old male presented with a swelling in the scalp for past 2 months. Nodule was excised and sent to the laboratory with provisional diagnosis of sebaceous cyst of scalp. Here we have the clinical picture of the patient with a small raised nodule in the center of the scalp. On gross examination, a small nodule measuring 1 into 1 into 1 cm in size was seen under the skin. Section was taken from the mass. Here we see that epidermis is normal and under the epidermis is a nodular lesion which is surrounded by fibrous tissue all around or a fibrous capsule and inflammatory cells. Within the lesion we see cross sections of many parasitic structures with fibrinoprolent exudate. Here we see cross section of the gravid worm with two uteri which are filled with microfilaria. Here we see the characteristic microfilaria of this worm filling the gravid uterus. The uteri are generally bipaired. Here we see these inflammatory cells with fibrinous exudate occupying the cystic cavity. Another worm cross section, another worm. So in effect we have a tangled mass of many worms lying in this cystic space under the epidermis in the subcutaneous tissue. Inflammatory infiltrate, inflammatory infiltrate. Based on these morphological findings, diagnosis of cutaneous oncosarcoma was made. Oncosarcaiasis. Oncosarcaiasis is a common chronic multisystem disease with dermatologic, ocular and systemic manifestations. There are a number of cutaneous manifestations of the disease including onsarcomas which are subcutaneous bundles of worms. Causative agent. Oncosarcaiasis is the second leading cause of infectious blindness worldwide. The disease is caused by Oncosarca volvulus, a filarial nematode and is transmitted by the bite of an infected black fly of Simulium species and is called dim dem fly in India. Although the disease is endemic in Africa, Latin America and Yemen, imported cases have been described in other countries because of increased travel across continents due to tourism promotion. The vector found near the fast flowing rivers typically bites during the day. The bites are classically painful and show a small hemorrhagic spot. Clinical presentation of oncosarcaisis. Symptoms of oncosarcaisis are caused by movement of non sheath microfilaria in the tissues like skin, connective tissue, and eyes. Light infections may produce no symptoms. However, heavy infections cause major diseases, which include acute and chronic oncodermatitis characterized by scattered pruritic papules, vesicles or pustules distributed over the shoulders, waist and buttocks. Oncosarcomas or subcutaneous nodules containing worms. Lymphadenitis. 
blindness these are the various manifestations of onchocerciasis if we look at cutaneous manifestations of onchocerciasis chronically infected skin loses its elasticity and becomes hypertrophic or thickened as a result of atrophy and loss of skin elasticity patients may develop premature exaggerated wrinkling of the skin skin may become hypo or hyperpigmented in advanced disease the lesions can be spotty depigmented and give rise to appearance of leopard skin or scaly and atrophic skin which is similar to lizard skin or thickened and hyperkeratotic elephant like skin may also have lymphedema of the groin or hanging groin and skin atrophy ocular lesions in onchocerciasis ocular involvement ranges from mild visual impairment to complete blindness lesions include punctate keratitis which is an acute inflammatory infiltrate surrounding dying microphyll area sclerosing keratitis which is due to scar tissue formation that may cause blindness anterior uveitis or iridocyclitis which may deform the pupil chorioretinitis optic neuritis and optic atrophy may also occur and cause blindness microphyllaria may be visible in the cornea and anterior chamber of eye during slit lamp examination adult worms usually do not cause ocular cysts unlike infection with loa loa and dirofilaria which move around in the conjunctiva onchocercoma onchocercal nodules are firm and non tender and are known as onchocercoma these are caused by presence of a tangled mass of adult male and female worms in the subcutaneous tissue adult worms may live in the subcutaneous tissue for years with the female producing 1/2 to 1 million microphyllaria yearly head face shoulder are the favored location for onchocercomas which are generally located close to bony prominences outside the inguinal and cervical regions histology of onchocercoma at early stage microphyllaria concentrate in the papillary dermis with clusters of inflammatory cells surrounding vessels and adenexa focal microabscesses and granuloma formation is evoked by the dying larvae at advanced stages secondary acanthosis parakeratosis pigment incontinence appear fibrosis is induced by the parasite and a fibrous capsule is formed which is surrounded by inflammatory cells within this capsule adult alive worms lie as a tangled mass or a ball of worms worms may be calcified or degenerated with dermal scarring and atrophy life cycle of the parasite humans are infected when bitten by the infected fly larvae are deposited into the bite site stage 3 microphyllaria migrate into the dermis and subcutaneous tissue these then mature into adults and remain in the subcutaneous tissue and form a nodule called onchocercoma microphyllaria are normally found in the dermis after being ingested by the fly through the bite from infected person the microphyllaria migrate to the muscles of the mosquito and become infective then larvae migrate to the proboscis of the fly from where they are transmitted to human during the next blood meal here is the diagrammatic presentation of the life cycle of the parasite diagnosis diagnosis of onchocercoma is made by the presence of parasite 
in subcutaneous nodule and morphology of the parasite. Morphology if we talk of the adult worm, the female adult worm is very long and thin and measures up to 50 centimeters in length. Female is usually gravid with paired uteri and presence of characteristic microfilariae in utero. The adult male is 2.5 to 5 cm in length. In cross section, Oncosarcoma typically has a cuticle and subjacent thin layer of muscle. The microfilariae, they are unsheathed with body nuclei that do not extend to the tail tip and are 220 to 360 micrometer long. The diagnosis of onchocerciasis is done through skin snips. Definitive diagnosis is based on the detection of microfilariae, primarily in the skin. Skin snips are the gold standard to investigate the presence of microfilariae. In ad frequently, microfilariae are found in urine, blood or sputum, particularly after initiation of therapy. PCR or polymerase chain reaction for detection of DNA using skin snips is significantly more sensitive than routine microscopy but is not easily available. Antibody detection is of limited value. There is substantial antigenic cross reactivity among Oncocerca volvulus and other filariae and different helminths and a positive serological test does not distinguish between past and current infection. So the take home message from this presentation is that one should be familiar with the geographical and tropical pathology. Also we should be aware that increased intercontinental travel is changing the picture of geographical pathology leading to infections which were not common in certain areas of the world. Parasitic infections play an important role in tropical countries. Index of suspicion has to be high and every effort should be made to localize and identify the parasite so that patient can get timely treatment. Thank you very much.